Well, hello and welcome to our webinar event today, sponsored by the OAUG, Reduce IT Service Desk Costs, and Save 10 to 20 percent or more. This webinar is sponsored by NOAA Software, headquartered in New York City. Our session today will absolutely be a maximum of one hour. Uh, your presenter today will be me. My name is Mike Zuckerman. I'm the CMO for NOAA and we'll have a demonstration by one of our systems engineers. So once again, welcome uh, for all the people that joined at the uh, 11th hour and 59 minute. Uh, I'll reiterate again, our session will be about an hour. Please send questions during this section right directly to my email, mzuckerman at noaa.com. I'll be your presenter today and uh, Ilya will support the demo. I can see that we have attendees from around the world. We have attendees from Brazil. Uh, it's, it's because of our uh, global distribution channels and global presence. Uh, NOAA has many customers around the world. And in any session, we'll find many of our customers just interested in keeping up with us. So thank you for attending. The agenda today is uh, pretty much as follows. We're going to talk very briefly about NOAA. We're going to share a view towards data you have never seen before that really powers these savings. And the question becomes, what can you do that we can't do? What can you enable to take 20, 10 to 20% off my operating expense of my help desk? That's a big claim. And the reason is that new technology today can frame data that perhaps most of the help desks in the world do not have access to. So we're going to frame the opportunity for you and your Oracle world. We're going to share our view of the status quo and then how the new data changes that status quo. We're going to show you how to impact help desk operations significantly and how to get to the wave of truly proactive service. There are customers today, visionary customers, that know about every problem in their user community just about before it's ever called in. That's what this technology does. And that's really how you get to our IT service desk nirvana. I think for most of the technologists on the phone, I looked at the audience list and your titles are fairly technology oriented. Um, many of you are line of business managers also. Um, the goal is to get past the PowerPoint and get you to the demonstration because I think for this team today, that picture will be worth more than a thousand words. So we'll do that as quick as we can. NOAA is a leader in user experience management. We've licensed 20% uh, of the Fortune 50. We have hundreds of global 5,000 customers. Over the past few months, we've licensed technology in Russia, Curaçao, South Africa, New Zealand, Canada, and just many, many name brand companies around the world are using our technology. The key differentiation to our technology is that we include user performance management extensions. And these absolutely and uniquely empower the things that we do that provide the underpinnings for what we'll discuss today. It's not just about UEM, it's about our extensions in that area and the way we implement. People do this for the most part because the ROI is fairly compelling. The market is not at a place today where you wake up in the morning and you say, by goodness, I need to buy this piece of software so I can tune up my IT service desk. You wake up in the morning and you might say, hey, I need an IT service desk piece of software, or I need telephone management software, or I need some RAID drives. But this technology is new enough that the total market so far is, is under half a billion dollars so that you have to introduce it to customers. And then because it is new, they like to build a business case around it. So that's really how it gets bought. Um, we have some major distribution channels. SAP resells the product around the world, which is somewhat phenomenal. It's an SAP version of the product. And uh, it's on their contracts, on their papers. So if you, in addition to your Oracle world, have pieces of SAP, uh, they would be delighted to work with you and also satisfy your needs. Clearly, in the Oracle world, uh, we're very dominant and prevalent and uh, have signed some of the largest uh, Oracle accounts in the world. Even recently, we'll talk about that. Without belaboring all of this, our customers are just name brand uh, accounts from all over the world, and they're the largest accounts in the world, typically. The ROI gets larger and larger as you have numbers of seats. And while many of you may say, well, I've got 800 seats, will this work for me? Sure it will. But for customers that have 30,000 seats, we have one pharmaceutical now that went into production with 70,000 seats. And it just shows you how this can scale and grow with your business. And uh, that's why a lot of the really huge companies have bought it, because their savings become compelling. We have customers today 
one of them on this list that told me in a meeting in the past month that they will save a bid under 10 million this year in operational benefits based upon the data and componentry that our software provides. Now, let's frame this up, right? Let's really put the, you know, the facts on the table to illustrate how can we do what we do. And the, the question I normally ask, and I'll ask, you know, help desk managers are pretty savvy. I'll ask, you'll know the answers right away, and you'll know what you don't know. I'll ask the CIOs, and they'll dance around a bit, but truth be known, they don't know the answers most of the time. When I say, what's going on with system errors, most people out there in the world have data in hand. It comes typically from a combination of their APM dashboards, application performance management dashboards, and their IT service desk information. And between those two things, they kind of know, you know, we've got a bunch of system errors. When you get to the percentage of system error versus user error, no one's got answers. Now, the help desk managers will say, well, wait a minute. We know that today we had 1,200 calls to the IT service desk. And typically, after two to three weeks, as we triage them down, probably 40% turn out to be user error or 60%, some number like that, right? And, and that IT service manager, trust me, they have the best answer. The CIO normally doesn't have the same pulse to the data because they're just looking at a lot of different things. But at the IT service desk, you know. And of course, what's the ratio? Well, that kind of depends on what you have. Well, Truth be known, that answer, 1,200 you know, reports to the IT service desk, is a fraction of what's really happening in your enterprise. The state of the art today, using this technology, will revolutionize and change the way IT service desks work forever. If you're using this technology today, and you say, what is the state of my enterprise for user error and system error today? I can see real time in my dashboard that there are 11,000 errors. 1,200 I can see have been reported to my help desk, whether that's to Remedy or to SAP Solution Manager or HP or CA or any other product. There are many fine products out there. But you see all of the system error and all of the user error, whether it's reported or not. The second thing you see, which is almost like a unicorn, almost as elusive, is you'll actually get visibility to master data error. And master data error often camouflages itself as, well, it's a user error, but we didn't serve up the right data. The user really kind of sort of did the right thing, but it didn't work because of master data error. And now you can start to see what's, what's happening in this presentation. You're getting a real-time framed view driven by powerful analytics to a dash that shows you user error. And, and there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. And we'll talk about how that will impact the help desk operationally, the way you run it today, how you can evolve your help desk for the future because you know this and where this will take you. Now, truth be known, you know what? I edited the slide this morning um, just for something else, and it should be 9.8%. Um, but be that as it may, the ratio is about, you could say it's 10.9 to 1, 9 to 1. It's in that range. When we show up in an account, the ratio of what they don't know about to what they know about is about th that point. And only 1 in 8 or so of the user errors actually get reported. Now think about the implications of this, okay? You've got a user error, right? And it's not reported. And that user error, maybe because of change management, your IT team rolled out a new release and the help desk is going nuts, right? That's what happens. Um, you roll out a new release and 82 people are stuck for 20 minutes trying to get a transaction done that used to work. But now that it's been customized, it doesn't work the same way. They're stuck. And some of them are reporting it. Some of them aren't reporting it. In fact, most of them are not reporting it. And there's a time they spend, and that has economic value. Now you can start to see, for all the stuff that's going on in my Oracle world, right, that you've instrumented with us, you know, what's the real impact to my organization? And it starts to have really, really powerful implications. You know, all of our customers tend to really go after big legacy apps where they thought there was nothing else to do, and they were able to really add more than a midlife kicker to a piece of software they thought was done. 
example, Siebel CRM, if you have Siebel, is a great place to start. The ROI we get is tremendous. And in the Siebel world, people work offline, so it works there too. But let's, let's dig into this now and figure out how we're going to use this data and where we can go with it. So when you step back, right, everything in your IT data center that feeds to you in IT, you know, help desk or service world um, is really about your infrastructure, really, really. You know, you've got everything virtualized and redundant and instrumented, and the APM tools can take you through a trace of anything. You may have to wire a transaction or two, but you can really find out what's under the covers from the time someone hits a key um, to maybe the time they see it give or take. Not always, but, but you know what's happening underneath. What we're adding visibility to that just doesn't exist out there today is how is the user performing, the performance of the user, how slow or fast are they at executing transactions or screens or modules or even buttons, right? Everything. You don't have to wire a single transaction. Everything comes out of the box. Anything they could do, for example, in Siebel CRM, it's all there and it's completely wired and we see everything they do in terms of proficiency or failure. Are they having errors? How did they have errors? Um, they called the help desk and said, I saved it, but it's gone. This new release doesn't work. And the help desk says, respectfully submitted, we love you, Mr. Customer. We love you, line of business. But I can see here, because I can see compacted workflow for every user. I can see you didn't save it. I can see all of your user errors, all of your system errors, and your compacted workflow. I know everything you did. When you call this service desk, we already have the information. And we reference it because we can make this call short for you. But I really know what happened. And that's a big change. The service desk can now go from being reactive. You're driving down the road and things are hitting your windshield to seeing way down the road. And it's a big change in perspective and a big empowerment. It's really about bringing a new class of real-time applications um, to the Oracle world and to your end users. And it's no more nor less as a piece of software, a very sophisticated analytics framework. We take all of this data, both system error and response time end to end, and the user performance and the user error, and we wrap it up in one near time, real time dash so you can make it actionable, so you can drive alerts off it and understand what's happening. And the CIO, I could tell you, 99.9% .9 of the time has never seen this data. Now, there are very smart people on, on many of our customer teams that will say, well, we have some of this data, but it's not viewable or actionable. It's in log files hidden away. It's inside of very technical tools that maybe they use in functional support for mediation. But this is the first approach um, in the world today that brings this up to a dashboard level and makes it you know, actionable and uh, uh, available for the help desk. So, so, so let's start into the specific problem you have. Let's, let's tear the cover off and, and dig into it. The first thing that we have to do to save money, right, is we have to reduce the time all around the support of issues, the response to issues, the documentation of issues, the resolution of issues. And some of the biggest pain points we hear all the time, I, I have a... Uh, a medical device company that told me their their biggest issue, the one that they brought up on our conference call recently, was um, intermittent problems. The customer said they saved it, the transaction lost it, but we were able to see for the first time that that wasn't the case. We could see everything the user did. We could see system errors and user errors, and we knew they failed to save the transaction. We love our end user customers, and perhaps with this new release, because they customized that transaction, we need to go back to application support and back to training and make sure that they either fix the customization or train people better, right? Because ultimately, the end user is more right than not. Also consider all of this time, right, that you sink into this sort of work. So when you use this technology, you start to see immediate benefits that we've documented over time across multiple customers. That's why people buy this, right? We reduce the number of calls. When someone calls with something you don't understand, there's often callbacks. You ask them for documentation. You know your users hate the interrogation. We've, we've determined through surveys. They just don't like to be asked questions. Sometimes the problem happened the day before. 
typically they ignore it the first, the second, the third time. They can't remember when it was. Um, the length of the calls is reduced, and the, re the reduction in time to remediate is reduced. You can immediately see what the error was exactly, what the user did exactly, what the workflow was exactly, and if it does look like some error that's not the user, you can drive that data right into a ticket either way. If it is a user error, depending on your organization, you may have a center of excellence that you flow things to, right? As opposed to functional support, or they may be one and the same, or they may be separate and distinct, right? All of that's there. And this just out the gate, just pretty much slams. You have lots of users, the numbers get quite large. And we have customers that save millions of dollars, over a million dollars per year in operational benefits due to this reduction. Now, we're not trying to eliminate our friends in IT service and support good grief. We're trying to empower you to be more productive, to show the organization that you're doing more with less, and we're now enabling you to take on a larger role. That's really what's in it for you. What's in it for IT service is that you can now expand your role in the organization because you're empowered by tools that no one has, and you can solve problems that we're going to talk about that have never been solved before. And this can now position you to grow the scope and role of IT service and, and really scale into what some of our customers are calling user performance management. Now, the next piece of this equation where the really big bucks are is in proactive support. And everybody talks about it. Well, our RAID device blinks. It fixes everything. And then we, you know, we go out there and proactively swap out drives or do what we need to do. It's, it's all automated. VMware does X, Y, and Z for us. Right? VMware is a great product. It does a lot of stuff. Um, but really, when you look at enterprise software, some of them have these phone home functions or they email people when they have internal problems. But for the most part, the state of software support for application level stuff is exactly where it was 10 years ago and maybe 20 years ago. Users suffer silently. They're in constant crisis. There's debate over service level agreements and everything all the time. And we just, you know, things hit the windshield. We go down the road and wham, right in the face. And that is life at the IT service desk, right? And, and you can change that. You can, you can empower yourself to change it with this technology. And IT service now can go on the offensive, right? You can start to reframe and change the way IT service can support the organization. And you can raise your value proposition by an order of magnitude in a very large company because you're enabling the solution to problems that they could not solve before. And you're contributing now substantial and large value to the bottom line. You can see by almost any cluster, geography, department, title, individual. I want to see what, what's happening with John Smith on his desk because he's the new VP for this line of business and he's complained about new releases before. I want to make sure before he even calls us that I know what's happening. You can see everything. You see 10,000 errors pretty much real time not the 1,200 that were called into the service desk. You see everything, and it's a big change. And now, for proactive support, you know, now you can isolate and remediate. You can change the value prop. So think about it. I have a customer that told me they're going to save slightly under $10 million in operational benefits. They have, you know, a couple tens of thousands of users. And, yeah, that's a big number, but I said... Oh, so how did you do on your help desk? They said, well, we've outsourced our IT service desk. Well, for this audience, that might be, oh my gosh. But you know what? Their IT service desk team internally manages the external vendor and now does the proactive support. And their ROI from all of that sustainment activity is millions of dollars. So they're reducing the number of things they send outside the company to the vendor. And... They're attacking problems proactively, which have huge benefits inside. So you see that there's a problem. What's, what's the number one thing that IT service desk personnel go into trauma over? <laughs> Everyone says there's a new release coming. It went through user acceptance. It's running great. Everybody likes it. And you guys know better. You know that when the sun comes up, that new release will cause complete and utter havoc across the base 
for a month or two. It's almost always that way. We did a survey and a study. You can get the study for free if you register on our site on change management. And two out of three times, unexpected things happen. It's just as sure as the sun will rise. And you just don't have visibility to all of these things, you know, until they hit you. But now at the IT service desk, um, when you roll out that new release, you're going to see immediately and proactively where the problem clusters develop. Now, some of those people will call you, but you're going to know if I get a call on something that doesn't sound familiar, I could immediately check to see how many other users is this problem affecting? How many people can't do the same thing right? So you are on top of your game and making big impact. Now, in some companies, um, we have some really impressive customers out there. I think it's Disney where they pick off clusters of problems one or two at a time and they just remediate them. They say, look, today, this month we looked at expense report processing and we found X number of user errors and we've updated our self-service. We did some targeted training. Um, we made a change to one customization we did that kind of screwed everybody up. And now we reduced that by 42%. And since the time they spent with all of these problems was worth $82,000 a month, and we reduced it by X percent, we just saved another FTE someplace in this organization instead of losing all this time to transactions people couldn't get done. And so now you're able to elevate the value prop for IT service desk into this user performance management, and now you're saving the company. You're not just processing the problems as they happen. You're saving the company operationally big bucks across the spectrum of everything they do. You moved into the strategic core of impact to the business process in the company. And that's why the IT service desk teams typically, you know, champion this technology. Because not only can they reduce, you know, cost and increase efficiency for what they're doing today, but they can move into true proactive service. And and right now, 99.9% .9 of the biggest companies in the world are still not doing this. You know, we have hundreds of customers, but there are 20, 30,000 really big companies and lots more mid-tier companies that could benefit and so it's still early on, but this is this is the value prop. And all the time when we do the you know return on investment analysis, we see these kinds of reductions um, for the apps we support. Just number of calls, numbers of time on the call. It's much faster to do a ticket. You do less tickets and you resolve things quicker. And all of that produces benefits. Now at Kraft Foods, they had a derivative benefit, which was the customers, the users inside the business said, our satisfaction also went up. They did a satisfaction survey and found that it, for the large application community they had, uh, their satisfaction went up, they believe, as a result of implementing this technology. It went from, a, I believe, uh, to a 4.5 out of 5, which for them was a very big deal, you know, across a large organization like Kraft Foods. This is a success story for what's possible, and I use BT because... They have stood tall, and 99% of our customers really don't want to share all the ROI data. You know, it's competitive advantage. We like you, Noah, but, but we, we really don't want to share our cost drivers. Well, you know, BT stood tall and said, this is great stuff, and we don't mind doing it. And they are saving a million and a half pounds every year because of us. They're servicing, you know, their big CRM centers and help desks, and um, they're a huge Siebel shop, right? And... And when we ask them, well, you know, do we need to do an interface for some SaaS product to do something new? They say, well, yeah, someday, but not today. You know, today we have this deployed. It works great. And it's a great way to save money with the Siebel implementation we have. And it's working wonderful for us at BT. By implementing the new process around our technology, you know, they've cut their true costs by something like 75 FTEs, and truth be known, they use that to, to get more work done. They, they don't you know, cut people. They, they embrace new workloads as they come on board, and they cut their hard expense on the support side. So this is a very, very big deal. Um, they are quoted. They're on the record for the savings they've seen. And um, this, is a, this, this, is, this is why people do this, right? When you wake up in the morning and you do this business case, then you'll see if it's important for you. 
Now, we have many other Siebel success stories. Siebel seems to be a place where we found a niche because a lot of the installations have been sort of quiet, right? You hit 8.1, maybe 8.2 if you're a, you know, you're a public firm, I mean, you're a public utility or your government. But change management's kind of slowed down, and yet we're still able to go in there with the IT service desk and the line of business app people and save a lot of money. You know, you've still got to train new people to use that technology. Just because Siebel as an application is quiescent and not super active, you're still hiring new people. They're still coming on board and they're still leaving. And they're still, you know, keeping the IT service desk more than active with its fair share of, of things to deal with. Um, we signed one of the largest banks in the world in Q4 of 2011. And, um, you know, this technology is a major factor in their effort to manage their global Siebel installations. In terms of product, it's pretty simple, right? The, the technology automatically connects to everything happening inside that application. Whereas most of the tools in IT are kind of broad, but they're not very deep. You know, you instrument a transaction or two. Um, in the case of this technology, you um, really go deep. You know, we, we go into every transaction, every component, and it's all automated out of the box. There's nothing for you to do. You come out of the box and you have the functionality, even to the point where if you did customizations using the standard, for example, Siebel's my, my, my show horse today, the standard Siebel framework for customizations, all of those show up in our dashboards with no extra work. It's all there, pretty much. I say 99.9% .9 to stay honest, and engineering reminds me that's the right number, but it pretty much works that way. When you're using a lot of other IT tools, you have to do everything manually. It's a huge amount of work, and, and you're still not getting to this user data. So now you're connected to everything. The analytics then discovers for you the things you need to know, right? Look over here. There's a problem. There's a cluster of problems, and if you've got alerts wired, you can generate an alert. You could even... You want to get fancy. If this, if I get a user error that involves 20% of my population in a two-day window, generate a bug report right into my BMC remedy, right? Those are the kinds of things you can think about that can really change the visibility. So, so normally the CIO says, what's happening in IT service? You say there's 1,200 bugs. And now you can say, hey, there's 10,000 bugs and we're moving proactively on these four things that are costing the organization today, this month, globally, about $280,000 in lost productivity. So now you've got all these things discovered. You're clearly at in a position of power and you can start to manage these problems down and out to optimize performance and deliver ROI. And it goes on every quarter for you. And, you know, we monitor all of the system infrastructure from the time they hit the enter key to the time they see a response, even including the thick client build. Now, there are primitive user experience management tools that you typically wire by transaction. They do not measure user performance. There is not anyone on the planet doing what we do for the major apps, for the user performance stuff. They map just to the application performance, and it's usually some average server level measurement we take into account even the build out in the browser if it's a web client. We do GUIs, we do virtualized Citrix environments, and we know exactly what is it to the user. Now, a derivative of this for another day, we have a webinar Friday with close to 200 registrants, which is how this will impact service level agreements, right? Because only you know with this technology what the true response is to the user. The converse of that is most people don't know, which is why service level agreements are such a hard contention all the time. Your users don't believe what you tell them because it isn't so, right? So there's a lot of places to go. And of course, the user execution piece I mentioned. There's a lot of components here, but safe enough to say that we're catching all the system error, all the user error, master data error most of the time, and workflow extracts. This is like nirvana for the IT service desk. This is everything that you're trying to extract from your user that they never know. Nor, nor really should they know. So there's a lot here to work with. It's a lot of data, and you'll see from Ilya's demo how it looks. In terms of implementation, there's not a lot for you to do. 
it doesn't impact any of your backend systems. It is solely based upon a lightweight client on the desktop. Uh, a fraction of 1% of the desktop's performance is used by the client. We've installed this all over the place. It's not a problem. And it's everything you need to do in your Oracle world. You can power right to standard BI environments like MicroStrategy or Business Objects. And away you go. And, you know, I use Siebel as the example because what a nice, big, entrenched application where nothing new has happened, where you can go in and save money on the IT service side. And there's a lot of other related savings. If you bring the technology and you can help reduce the training cost and the change management surprise and cost. So there's a lot of places you can go. So I'm going to now segue to... Ilya's demo, and I'm going to pass control to him, and uh, we'll handle questions after Ilya's demo. So give me a second here to do this transition. Thank you for joining today's webinar, and uh, Mike, thank you for that presentation. Um, today we're going to focus on uh, the NOAA solution. We're going to take a look at some of the use cases, especially as they relate to reducing uh, support costs. Um, and we'll talk about some of the primary use cases, how our customers are achieving that. The first area I want to start with is the ability, and, and Mike just talked about it briefly, the ability to implement a truly proactive service organization. Uh, identify proactively where the issues are occurring, the scope of the impact, and being able to reduce the number of tickets that are coming into the support organization. Um, if we take a look at the uh, at this dashboard, which is the error analysis, first of all, you will note that NOAA uniquely monitors all of your application instances without ever connecting to the backend systems. So, for example, uh, in this data set, we're going to take a look at a uh, Siebel implementation, and you can see that a NOAA agent deployed on the user's desktops is able to monitor all of your Siebel applications. Uh, it is more and more common for customers not to just monitor the production system, but also take a look at the UET systems and even test systems and actually incorporate NOAA earlier in the application lifecycle in addition to basic operations and support. One of the key values that NOAA provides is the ability to see all of your issues across all of your users in real time. So unlike other solutions which are using scripted agents or uh, robots, with a NOAA solution, we are monitoring the entire application out of the box without any scripting, and we're monitoring all of the users that are utilizing this application. So for example, here we're looking at our Siebel instance, and of course you could see the various screens, account screens, opportunity screens, and you could see exactly where which, how many users are utilizing each one of those screens, and where the error messages are occurring. Now, what kind of error messages are we monitoring? As Mike has said, we're monitoring 100% of all the error messages. These are not just system errors or something that has been scripted in some log, but these are 100% of all the messages or the errors that the application is returning to the end user, and of course this includes user errors, and this is what allows us to achieve some of the ROI that Mike has referred to. So for example, if a user has problems entering information into a specific process or a screen, and a lot of times these could be work stopping issues, right? You could have a user out in the field uh, trying to enter information about an order, or you could have users in a SIBO environment in a call center where every minute counts, and if they are not able to execute the process properly, you need to know about those issues and be able to proactively address them. Now, one of the interesting things also that uh, is only possible with the NOAA technology is, especially in the SIBO world, is that we're monitoring the users even if they're offline. Um, what we have found is that in Siebel deployments, for example, uh, more than 50% uh, uh, of users in many enterprises are completely offline. So if you get error messages or if you get issues during those offline sessions, most monitoring tools that are focused on the server side or the network side are completely blind. With a NOAA solution, however, you're able to capture all of the messages 
even if the user session is offline because as soon as the user connects to the network, that data is synchronized and the support team has that full visibility into the user's experience. So let's look at some of the examples here. Uh, we have some errors here like required fields, wrong values, um, and we're seeing how many users are having this problem and how many instances of that issue. Now, you know if 30 users are having the same type of problem, that's probably going to result in 30 tickets to your support team, right? That's going to be 30 remedy tickets um, uh, in, your, uh, in, in your environment. So with a NOAA solution, the idea is to quickly, proactively identify these issues. So, for example, you know, uh, server error, let's take a look at some of these uh, users that are having this problem. Uh, with a NOAA solution, you able to drill down and get the detailed information about the end user. So you have all of the username. And again, note that these are real users. These are not scripted uh, robots or, or, or agents that are deployed in the environment, but these are real uh, users that are using the application. You get to see the details of the screen, the view, the exact error message that is occurring that is causing the problem. So here, for example, you're seeing a session timeout. The user is not able to actually log into the SQL instance. And again, in most cases, an error like this would actually not even show up in a server log because this user has not even connected to the SQL server. But with a NOAA solution, because the agent is deployed on the desktop, we're capturing those types of errors as well. Now, as you drill down further into the NOAA data model, you can see a lot of additional detail. You can see the user a Windows login name. You can see the data, time, the computer, the IP address. The IP address is also very important, especially when you have a lot of users working offline or remotely. You want to be able to identify if the problem is local to the company's network, or maybe this is because the user is actually offline. You're also getting a lot of application details, which your uh, troubleshooting teams are going to need in order to be able to reproduce the problem. And of course, you get the details about the error message. Now, in addition to the, this type of uh, uh, analysis, you could go even further into what we call the user workflow. The user workflow is truly unique and only NOAA could provide this by having an agent on the user desktop that is able to capture chronologically exactly what the user has done with an application from the moment they have logged in. So for example, this user has been logged in into SIBO application for about three hours, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then 2 p.m. And you could see every screen, every view, every applet that they have access. You could see how much time they spent within this application. You could see every time they uh, execute any type of operation. You could see how long that took. So you could actually see right away if there's a performance problem. And any time the users are getting any type of error messages, those are all captured as well. So for example, if we want to take a look at some of the error messages, you could just quickly identify that, see the error message, see the time, open the ticket for this user. You can actually be proactive about this, um, open a remedy ticket and uh, attach this information. So you're also saving time on incident documentation and incident escalation. Um, and this is how co companies are able to achieve some of those uh, um, ROIs that Mike has talked about, the ability to reduce the number of support tickets, and then for the remaining tickets that do end up in the support organization, be able to reduce the time to resolution. These two value drivers are the top areas how customers are able to transform their support organization and reduce the cost. Um, let's go back and uh, look at uh, some of the additional areas that NOAA monitors. Um, I want to take a look at the response. Um, Mike has talked about how NOAA is able to provide a response metric, but this is not a response from a typical APM perspective, but this is a response from an end-user perspective. So one of the challenges that we see is with all the APM tools out there, there is still a visibility gap in terms of what are the users actually experiencing. With a NOAA solution, because we're sitting on the user desktop, we're able to capture the end-to-end -end response time. So let's assume you're in a web-based application like SIBO or SAP Portal, and you have various links within that application, various buttons, various drop-down menus. For each one of these operations, we're able to capture the actual response time. We're also able to 
capture the number of its executions or the number number of users that are executing that process, which is extremely important because if you're having a response pr time problem, you want to be able to understand the impact. So for example, here if you have a response issue where users are waiting 11 seconds every time they click on a link and it's happening 10,000 times, that's a big productivity gain, or pr productivity loss, I'm sorry. So the ability to understand the impact of response issues on the user community, the ability to understand the impact to the business process, because we're monitoring from the desktop perspective, we could tell you exactly within which SIBO process or SIBO transaction this issue is occurring. This is what allows the support teams to really understand and create a dialogue with business and understand the priorities in terms of response issues. Um, again, NOAA provides an extreme amount of detail to allow you to get to the root cause very quickly. Um, in addition to just monitoring response for, for the key application components and for the end users, you could also leverage something called the user attributes. And the user attributes are extremely important, especially when you're dealing with response issues, in that they're able to help you pinpoint where the problems are. Uh, a user attribute is any property of a user, including a site, a department, a location, a, an organizational unit. And the user attributes automatically become an aggregation point and allow you to see additional insight into your uh, performance problem. So for example, here I could quickly identify that for example, site one and site three are really not stable. There's a lot of variations and fluctuations in the response issues. Um, and the same thing could apply to other metrics, whether it's the errors, user errors, or system errors. You're able to quickly identify which specific locations are actually experiencing an increase in those errors, so you're able to address them in a proactive manner. Uh, last area that I want to talk about is the ability to measure adoption of the application, or what we call the activity. Um, and this is also extremely important in being able to realize the full value of your application. Um, whether you are in application support and you have requests for various custom development tasks, um, you really need to first baseline and understand how the application is being used. Is it being used to its full potential? So for example, here we're monitoring the true activity time of all of my eight SIBO instances. I could get a breakdown for each uh, individual screen or process within a SIBO application, for example. So for, exa for, so for instance, let's talk about the account screen. Um, I see that this is the, the most heavily utilized uh, process within my SIBO application, but what if I need to go deeper? What if I want to take a look at it from a view perspective? Um, if you see that the SIBO screen actually has 159 different views and applets. So with our solution, you're able to really granularly and deeply understand the adoption levels of a specific process. You can also look at the sequence of events. Are users utilizing those views and applets in the right sequence? And this all helps you justify your development efforts, helps you justify priorities in terms of uh, support activities, and also help you dialogue with business and help you understand various targeted opportunities, whether it's training, whether it's remediation programs, and so forth. So activity metrics is definitely an important component into understanding the, the various support uh, priorities and activities within your organization. Um, so I think we covered the basics. There's a lot to show, uh, a lot of use cases that we could uh, um, you know, uh, follow up with. Uh, and definitely please reach out to your account managers if you want to schedule uh, deeper uh, demo sessions. We will we'll gladly do that. Um, I think I'm going to pass back to Mike for uh, Q&A uh, and take uh, questions from the uh, participants. And our Application Performance Management 2012 study. So you'll get both of those studies in email as well. Thank you, folks, and have a great day.